Hey, Damon. What's up, buddy? Not much. How are you? How are you? Really good. Thanks for coming on to uh, oh. IG Live with us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Wanted to uh, congratulate you on your uh, pro contract. And, Thank you. And, and talk a little bit about uh, just where you are with that and, and, and obviously the uh, the progression of the sport, you know, and, right. and, and you being involved with it, you know. So um, um, I like to start out with, like, I, I, I read in your bio, like, you grew up in Australia, yeah? That's right, yeah, eight years. Okay. Wow, okay. So, you know, the racing over there is really, really, like, exciting over there, like, yeah, like the support different. around cycling in general. It's definitely more like a party, for sure. Really? You know, people have a good time. It's, uh, I mean, they're quick. You know, they take their stuff seriously. Right, right. Well, really quick, I just wanted to thank our, our, our sponsors, our partners, you know, in terms of just what, where we've come as far as, but, uh, so Science and Sport, Champion Systems, Giro, uh, it's not a bike shop. I don't know if you're familiar with the shop out in San Marino, but Sean and Danny, Danny Finneran. Uh, oh, I know Dan Finnerman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Really cool shop, man. Okay. Really cool shop. Got to check and, it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, also, Easton Cycling, Hunt Wheels, and Jazz Head. You know, uh, if it wasn't for those guys, you know, obviously uh, we wouldn't be where we are. So I just wanted to give them a shout out. But um, so, so tell us, tell us a little bit about like your development in terms of like, like I know you started at a young age competing, mm -hmm. and uh, at what point did you did you begin to take it seriously? Like at like well, it was something that you wanted to do. When I started racing the Ontario Icebreaker Criteriums, I realized how much fun it was because previously okay. I was just doing it recreationally with my dad. And okay. we would go on these long bike rides and I was like always kinda of wondering if there was more. And soon okay. I started waking up at like the Dawn Patrol races at five thirty and we had had our we had head out to Ontario and we'd do the right. Chris and that's when I really fell in love with it was gotcha. being able to race those races were definitely dawn patrol man like i think <laughs> yeah like, especially ju the junior ones <laughs> junior start times at 7 a.m <laughs> oh my god maybe even 6 30 it was crazy i know i remember that yeah, yeah i do remember that mm -hmm. well that's cool and so and so just to bring us up to speed so so you race for zwift is it mm -hmm. swift swift cycle swift. yeah yeah so you race for them for two or three years yeah well two and a half they're part of my junior career Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also so I, with I Academy on the track and uh, ODP. Gotcha. Both gotcha. The track. Yeah. Right. Right. And I wanted to mention that to the people that are watching, you know, that, that Eddie has an extensive background of racing uh, six day races, correct? That's right. Uh, or, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. which obviously, you know, take place over in Europe or well, are, are famous in Europe, but obviously mm -hmm. I'm sure you've done some six days here. Yes. Well, there's the, the Detroit racing and that's they try and like uh copy it as much as possible it's it's a blast yeah Detroit gotcha. is very similar to six days okay okay mm -hmm. so you know one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is because and I and I mentioned to you you know when we spoke on the phone a couple of days ago was that you know the idea of raising the profile of junior development in general you know to acknowledge the work that obviously all of you put in you know to mm -hmm. to, to be involved with the sport and obviously it culminates with you getting with you getting a pro contract. And so it's it's about like acknowledging that and 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 I want you to talk about like what do you think attributed to you ultimately getting this pro contract? You know, obviously you might have been on their radar or whatnot, mm -hmm. but I mean I, tell the people I think, what um, that through, kind of worked out. I met so many people who who just uh, so I met a lot of people through the track who helped me uh, uh, maintain connections to professional teams, such as, you know, even people like you, who I uh -huh. got to know a couple of years ago, supported me. Um, people right. like Kevin Phillips, Roger Young, um, Laura right, Carmade, of right. course, on the road. But I think through the track is where I really uh, became familiar with the people who I know now. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And so when, when prior to obviously getting offered the contract, was there sort of like a, a several conversations that took place around just what you wanted out of the sport and what they were looking right. for? Well, I made my goals known. Like I told people what I wanted to do uh -huh. and then they saw that I was really motivated and training hard. So they, 
invested the time to talk with me and sit down and have a lunch and discuss my goals. And mm -hmm. they thought that I was someone they could develop because um, I knew a lot of people back from my academy who right. had connections with the team. And I think, you know, anyone can make the connections. It's just a matter of showing up. Right, right. I'm mm -hmm. glad you said that, showing yeah. up. And, yep. you know, and I was going to say that too, because like, so, so I've watched your development and um, your mom and dad are great. I remember, you know, they They're were bringing awesome. like sandwiches yeah. to the track, whatever, <laughs> PB and J's, yeah. and it was great. You know, I loved them and they, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they've supported junior racing over the years and, and that's really a cool thing. But what I was going to say is that, you know, I've watched your development and, and what, and I remember, I think probably the first or like the third time we talked, I think I asked you the question. I was like, so what drives you? I don't know if you remember that, but I asked you, what drives you to get up at, I don't know, 6 a.m. to go ride your bike? Because I saw yeah. at that particular time, and that was three years ago, well, almost three years mm -hmm. ago, that how, how dedicated you were to the sport. And so right. my point to that is that at the end of the day, I feel, and this is just my humble opinion, that mm -hmm. in part, you got this contract because you put in the work and that's what they saw in terms of offering you this and, 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 and where you are right now. So I just want to give you a shout out, big ups, like putting in the work and, and, and here you are now. So uh, I think at the end of the day, that's what matters. It's like you mm -hmm. getting on the bike, doing the work and the rest will take care of itself. You know, like, yeah. like the development part, obviously for you, you know, it's like there's stages where, you you're going to go from like smaller races to bigger races as you've developed. And so mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about uh, just your training now as it, as it, as it compared to when you were a junior? Well, it's definitely taken a step up. You know, I've started doing large amounts of volume because I've been doing online school. So I have time for four or five hour rides and okay. it's for sure became more specific because as a junior, the races are so diverse. You know, you'll have a hill climb, you'll have crits, you'll have races like Voss where it's a 14 mile flat TT and then you'll have, you know, like um, a series of crits seven to eight days. And right. as you become older, you your goals and your perspective become smaller. So you specify okay. on one or two races. So it's definitely more specific um, and a little more fun too because you can actually see your progression towards one specific goal rather than trying to make it to like, 10 races across the country in order to get selected for the national team, which is gotcha. really difficult. Right. Gotcha. Mm, gotcha. Just making it out there. Yeah. Right. So your longest rides right now are probably up to upwards of five hours on some in days. In the past couple of weeks, I've actually been doing a lot of intervals, so lower okay. volume, but to when I do do my volume and base, yeah, it's four or five hours. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when are you, when, when are you, when's your first race for, for 2021? First, race well you know i'm really hoping to make this selection for taiwan and japan which okay. are nice. end of may in the fall that's gotcha. my goal that's what i'm working towards currently is gotcha. um proving to the team that i'm capable of helping out um right right sure right right and then the next race that's somewhat set in stone is nationals right um u23 and pro so 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 you said selection. So how is that? How is that selection made? I mean, obviously you have I don't know ten guys on the roster, right? So between now and May, and I mean you don't have to give out all the secrets, but like, <laughs> right. like what is what is what do you need to do to convince Paul Paul Abram? Right, he's one of the right. guys that run. That's yeah, right. That that you're ready for Taiwan. If in a nutshell, like what it's what really, has to happen for you? I mean, power files are so important. You know, you have to have good power data. It's, I'm glad you said that. I know ahead, it's I'm annoying. Sorry. It's it's like very annoying to have to uh, like, you know, upload your rides, analyze them. But at the end of the day, when you have that power, um, even if it's subpar, like even if your power isn't where it should be, you right. can still send it to team directors. Uh -huh. And as long as they see that you're capable of analyzing like analytics when it comes to like, you know, left, right power, stuff like that, average power. Right. If right. they see that you know how to do that, then they're definitely going to be more willing to invest time and money into you to take you overseas gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. so i want i want i think all my guys are on this live right now and so okay. joking jokingly but actually seriously <laughs> guys your strava for now is your power right right Meaning yeah. that's how we document 
how you're riding, when you're riding, and how much you're riding. So you heard it from the uh, from the new pro, you know, Eddie Huntsman, that it, that's where it starts. And, and that's so that's the thing that we kind of implemented a couple of years ago that like, OK, anybody that's on the team, we need you on the Strato so we can know at least that you're riding your bike because all our kids are young, you know, 16, right. 17 cat fives, and they're just getting exposure to the sport. So we're just making them accountable for mm -hmm. what we need to see on the Strava. And it's, uh, they've been pretty consistent. So right. I'm happy for that, you know, so, That's good. um, so, so once again, you know, it, 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 for me, it's about raising the level of the sport and acknowledging what you're doing. And one of the things I wanted to mm -hmm. point out to people who are watching that, and I mentioned this to you that, and I researched this a little bit, 11 pro tour teams or world tour, they're called world tour. Now 11 world tour teams, sponsor uh from u23 down to cadet cycling teams mm -hmm. and as i told you what that simply means is that they understand that that's the future of the sport mm -hmm. and and you know for yourself like guys are getting younger i mean pagacha yeah. what, what was he was he he went in 20, 21 yeah he won the tour yeah so so that's the thing it's like they understand that the future of the sport starts at 12, 13, 14 years old, and they're investing in that. And so as I was telling you, and my idea around that is that, you know, if even at the continental level, if a team, say a team has a million dollar budget, I don't know what teams mm -hmm. have, but if you invest it, at least, say, a couple kits, uh, uh, pay for some entry fees and do some mentoring via, like, obviously we're doing it virtually now, you know, but right. to, to kind of follow that junior and see where they're going, give them mm -hmm. some advice that would do a lot for the sport, you know, and it doesn't cost a lot to do that. So uh, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know, novel idea, but I just think that it, 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 it's consistent with what pro tour teams are doing. And I think that's one area that maybe we need to start, you know, it, which, what's your take on that? What do you right. think? I, I think you're totally right because in Europe, the children who are racing bikes can always see their next step and they can, they can always see, where they're going to be in two or three years. But as an American cyclist growing up, it was hard to see where I'd be. Right. And it was almost kind of scary because your parents invest, like they're investing all this money into you and yeah. they don't know if there's going to be a next step where you live. And now that people have programs like you who are setting up kids and helping them and maintaining, like, you know, I see you guys working on bikes and stuff like that. Like right. that's as much of a next step. And that's good, but it's going to take way more because, like, you're, we're going to need people from, like, everywhere. Because as a junior, you can't just, you know, go to a bike race and, like, have no one be noticing you. It's important right. to see, like, where you're, like, where you can be and not have right. to, like, step out into the dark. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you made that point. Um, so, um, so what do you think you're doing? 15 hours a week right now? I'd say a little less. High intensity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so you're done with high school this year mm -hmm. and you're obviously trying to make the team to go to Taiwan. Um, yeah. So, so what would you, what advice would you give 16, 17 year old that's coming up in the sport? Like what's, what's one of, what, what would you say to them in terms of like, just. I'd say when you have time, you should be riding, you know? It's so easy to like sit around and say, oh, I only have two hours. You know, it's going to take me 20 minutes to kid up, 20 minutes right. to shower. Then by right. then I'm only going to have like hour and 20 minutes to ride or uh, like 60 minutes to ride, you know. So it's right. really difficult to manage your time. And right. I had my parents help me out with that. So I was really lucky. But it's something that I'm still learning myself. Gotcha. It's like when you have the time you ride, you know, you don't sit around and wait until it's too late. Then you can finally convince yourself that you can't, you know, it's, right. you have to do it when you're thinking about it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so on days that, like, I mean, obviously there are days when you may not feel like doing it, but obviously you know right. it's, it's, it's obviously it, it's something that you need to do. How do you, how right. do, is, is there a mental, is there a mental thing that you, that you tell yourself when it's, when it's cold or early or whatever? Well, you got to go out there and put it. I've gotten dropped in enough races to know how boring it is to be riding by yourself. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> it's, it's, right. It's much more fun riding off the front than off the back. And gotcha. that's what I think about when I train. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, you're, you're, you're considered a homegrown talent. And, mm -hmm. um, like, I think, um, uh, by the way, so 
junior Nash, junior track nationals is slated for Carson this year, right? I think so. If we get through, you know, mm -hmm. this pandemic and everything, obviously. You know? Right. So, yeah. Will you be, or have you aged out for junior? I've aged out. Yeah. Okay. So no nationals for you this year. No, okay. uh, maybe elite, but I don't know. If, I don't know if they're going to be having elite nationals in Carson. I'm gotcha. not too sure. Gotcha. You mean for track? Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, very cool, man. Um, uh, so once again, congratulations, man. Um, awesome. you know, thank you. We're going to be following you. You know, like I said, this <laughs> is, this is, this is actually going to be a series of, uh, IG lives that uh, we're going to get in contact with juniors that we know. You know uh, Jason Capella out of Detroit? I do. Yeah, we were okay, on the so uh, really... ODP together. Okay, gotcha. So we're going to try to get in touch with him, bring him on, and, and you know, celebrate his efforts and mm -hmm. see where he is right now. Because he went to – he did go to the development center, right? Uh, yeah, he track. came to uh, Carson, then also over to Appledorn with us. Gotcha, gotcha. He was uh, sprinting over there. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I've been checking out his IG. He's like – He's he looks like he's bodybuilding now. So like he's got these, you know, he's got. I mean, he's a sprinter. His, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah good yeah. kid though. I met him the year junior nationals this year. Was that twenty nineteen? That's right. Yep. Yeah. 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 In the, in, Out of in Detroit. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very yeah, cool, was... man. Well, well. Once again, you know, thank you for coming on. You know, I appreciate it. And um, you know, for me, this is going to be the start of like several. And like I can say, mm -hmm. like, I was thinking like. Who do I reach out to? Like, you know, that. And then when I saw the yeah. news, like, pro contract, Eddie Huntsman, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I appreciate your you time man, on this. And tell mom and dad I said hello. Will do. And uh, I look forward to the season, man. Um, good luck and um, stay safe. Great. Thanks for the call. Really appreciate All it. All right. Take care, Eddie. Bye. Bye. And now you're sure you want to end. So I'm going to I'm going to be on live for a few more minutes. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Can you hear me? Can you hear my voice? Jaden, where are you going? What are you talking about? Take care. <laughs> give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Somebody give me a thumbs up. You can hear me. Yes, we can. Thank you. So, um I just for for the seven people that are still here, uh, Maurice, uh, okay, Diego, Mia, thank you. Um, so what I just want to say is that uh, you know Eddie uh, put in the work, and he has a pro contract. And I saw his resume, his his profile that he sent to uh, the Elevate we plix team that he's racing for and it's extensive and the point i'm making is that it was like if not it was like but it was it, it, he was applying for a job he was a, applying for a job to be a professional cyclist and he got the job and so for all you guys that are out there that are you know on you know our guys you know uh just continue to put in the work man you know and obviously we always talk about that it goes beyond cycling, you know, cycling is just one piece of the puzzle as far as you guys, uh, getting opportunities. So just, uh, just keep putting in the work. Um, and, uh, you know, things will happen. So, uh, yeah, people, but anyway, I got to go. Um, have other things to do, but um, I appreciate you guys coming on and uh, we'll have another guest probably in another two or three days. He's actually a young man out of Detroit uh, that, thank you, thank you. Uh, out of Detroit, track racer, uh, young brother named Jackson Capella. And so uh, thank you, Eddie. And so until then, you guys be safe, uh, keep riding your bikes and uh, We'll be in touch. Talk to you later. Peace.